Hi again, friends. Good to be with you. Matt Noyce. Friday's Insights video. The Insights video goes out through the next several days. So one of the things we've been talking about all week in Insights is that Atlantic disturbance that was going to be coming in, right? Really evident on water vapor. Water vapor, a great tracer in the atmosphere, shows you where you've got dry air in yellow and orange, the moist air that shows up in blue and white and green. And look at the swirl in the atmosphere right here. See that? Wow, is that impressive. That's a big upper level storm at the jet stream level. That's been moving off to the north and west now. It's coming right up along the coastline. It's going to interact with the surface front that's laid out along the I-95 quarter, and it's going to light it up in terms of showers, downpours. And this is why we've got a flood watch. It's out across parts of southern New England going into the day on Saturday because of the amount of rain that will come down. Not so much that it's a long duration event, but rather the fact that you've got a ton of humidity. You've got this stalled out frontal battery. Look, it's already lighting up, right? And when you analyze the map, you can see where that frontal battery is. So think about it this way. You've got a big jet stream level disturbance, that huge swirl we looked at. There's energy associated with that. And then you've got Atlantic moisture, you've got humidity, and you've got a converging wind or a frontal boundary at the surface, which is really good for focusing rain. I would be most concerned about heavy rainfall amounts near where that front stalls out. And that mostly is going to be across interior parts of southern New England. Now, this is the basin-wide average. One thing that you saw us do with those downpours that came into northern New England the other day, and this did a really good job, is I showed you, okay, this is what the general forecast is from the U.S. government on rainfall amounts as an overall average, but that we have built our own proprietary data here at Wonder outside. We continue to build it. We continue to expand it. But what it's meant to do is get hyper local and hyper detailed. So one of the things it did with the northern New England downpours was it highlighted the potential for over five inches of rain in a couple of spots. And that happened. We saw big flooding in northern New England. So this time around, we don't see any five-inch amounts, but I do want to point out to you anyway that when you get into parts of Worcester County, the oranges that you see there, that would be like three and a half to four inches of rain. And then you've got other areas that show up with a yellow and a couple of oranges mixed in. So here you're talking about two and a half to three inches of rain that may come down in a couple of spots. So again, we need to work on trying to get this data into our nice mapping system so it looks real kind of professional video quality for you. But we are using this data behind the scenes, and I did want to share with you anyway, this is why you've got a flood watch it's up because will it be to the exact community maybe maybe not but regardless it certainly is an indication that okay there's going to be some amounts that are significantly higher than others and there may be some flash flooding or flooding that goes on of streams and creeks and low-lying poor drainage areas during the morning to early uh, afternoon on Saturday. So something to keep in mind, particularly if you're going to be out and about and traveling or anything like that. Uh, look, here's the predicted map as we go into Saturday. You'll watch that rain fill in throughout the course of the morning, the midday. By the time we get to the early afternoon, it starts to shift east, but the center of low pressure is kind of coming right over us. So really, it's going to be later in the afternoon that it breaks apart more. Now, it doesn't mean it stops entirely, but it breaks apart more. The farther north you go into New England, the more it's kind of scattered showers rather than that steadier rain that comes through for you. And by Sunday, everybody's got a better day. I'm much more optimistic on Sunday. We have been, Danielle and I, all week long because it looks like drier air is able to come in. There may even be a slight drop in the dew point, which I'll show you here in just a moment. And then either way, the humidity is back at you again Monday, Tuesday. Now, Monday, there'll be a couple of showers that will try and drive through, particularly in the afternoon. And Tuesday, probably not, probably a blend of sun and clouds, but it's going to be pretty warm. And we'll get to that here in just a moment. So in the meantime, let me get you covered with that dew point forecast. So many of you really look to this and say, is there any relief that's coming? Sunday, you can see it's not a big drop, but we'll take whatever we can get. But what has not changed? Ever since Monday's Insights, when we started with this 14-day dew point, which is because you asked for it, by the way. We listen to all of your feedback. We really appreciate it. Look at that drop that comes in by the end of the week. Dew points down in the 50s. Doesn't last forever. Uh, the high dew point air comes back as we get out into uh, the following week. But at least you know you've got a little bit of a break coming up at the end of next week. All right. High temperature Saturday going to likely be held down across southern New England. You've got a lot of clouds. You get the rain. Now, why don't you see the rain here as much as you just did where I showed you? Remember that as we get later into the afternoon, it breaks up more and more. The farther north you go, the warmer it is because the fewer the showers are and the more the breaks, the sun will be able to come out particularly later in the day. Saturday night, it's just going to be nice to not be stuck in the 70s everywhere. We get down to the 60s. We'll take what we can get. Uh, Sunday, you do warm it back up to around or over 90 degrees in a whole bunch of spots for us. And by the time we get to Sunday night, again, 
at least you're not in the 70s for lows in a lot of spots. You are still in southeastern Mass or even in the city of Boston, but many of us can get down into the 60s. Anyway, Monday is that day. I told you there'll be some showers that come through. Look, we still may be able to get up into the 90s. It depends on the timing of the showers. Either way, we think Tuesday you're certainly back up around or over 90. You're doing that with a blend of sun and clouds. So the humidity and heat doesn't really break until we get toward the end of next week, as you saw. We encourage you to get the app. Get the 14-day forecast for no matter where you are. Just make sure if you get it, pinpoint your location. Once you save your location, hit the three dots next to your location. You can actually put the pin in your exact backyard, wherever you want to do it. It's on the App Store and uh, Google Play. Hope you have a great day. Look forward to seeing you again with more updates at OneDegreeOutside.com.